Every year, we throw away over 250 million tons of waste in the United States. We all know that this has significant impacts on our environment, ranging from uh, methane emissions from uh, rotting food to the heavy metals that leach out of, out of our electronics. It seems like not a week goes by where we don't see another bit or another piece of how our relationship with waste impacts the environment. And this is all the more frustrating when you realize that if we could sort and recycle this material, it would actually have a great deal of value. Recycling has made a huge dent in this problem. Especially in the, in the 90s, recycling rates grew quickly. But unfortunately, in the last decade, they've stagnated and remain around 34%. Why is that? Part of the answer is that recycling requires a tremendous amount of manual labor. People actually sort through this waste by hand. It is not a very pleasant job. It is dull, dirty, and dangerous, and this causes all kinds of problems for recycling facilities in terms of turnover, in terms of liability, and in terms of absenteeism. I'm Tanya Horwitz, the founder of Amp Robotics, and we are creating systems that automate the sorting problem. With our two initial systems I'm showing here, we believe we can cut the cost of sorting by 50%, if not significantly more. I'm very happy to share with you today uh, one of our first public demonstrations of these systems. What you'll see are, the, are, are, two, robotic, uh, are two robots uh, sorting uh, uh, collaboratively. They actually uh, pick out, they can uh, see and pick out all the valuable material beneath them. Um, we can sort all kinds of material from plastics to, to cartons to bricks to wood to cardboard, pretty much anything that appears in significant volumes in, in facilities. What you're seeing in this video is the system is sorting separated waste. And this is the current state of the art in robotics, not just in recycling for automated systems. But our system actually goes further. Using machine learning, we have trained our system on thousands of uh, images of this, uh, these different classes of weight, and they can actually peer into and pick out of cluttered waste streams. And this is huge. What this means is that we can install these systems on existing in, in re existing recycling facilities with a no change to their existing processes. We've designed the system to have a very compact footprint so they can install a single unit and have it work side by side with other people. We have a very small technical team that's gotten us this far. We have experience ranging from DARPA robotics projects to Google infrastructure and uh, even uh, wireless energy startups. Uh, and we've also been fortunate to have tremendous support uh, from a number of players, in, from, ranging from uh, the Oscar Blues Brewery to the National Science Foundation and the st state of Colorado. ABB, one of the largest robot manufacturers in the world, has helped us adapt their technology to the recycling problem. And we're very, for, or, and we're very happy to share that just last week we actually uh, won an award for our new recycling technology. Uh, we're Amp Robotics and we're creating scalable recycling solutions. Uh, please follow up if you'd like to learn more about the future of recycling. Thank you. I'm the only female on the panel, I just know that. I'll go first. Um, I have a question about contamination. How do you deal with that? Um, well, so uh, one of the main purposes of these robots is to actually uh, pick out the contamination out of uh, the waste stream. So if you have a fiber line, which means newspaper and cardboard and things like that, we actually pick out all the contaminants uh, that are in that stream. Does that answer your question? Or? Yes, thank okay. you. Yeah, quick question on mechanics. How fast is your uh, sorting system? What's your throughput per day, tons per day limitation? So uh, it depends on uh, the weight of each individual object you, uh, you pick. Uh, and so um, we prefer to think about it in terms of uh, picks uh, yeah. per minute. Uh, and so our low cost system, which has a very low th uh, footprint, it does 50 picks per minute. And the higher cost, uh, higher throughput system does 100. Um, and then uh, they actually have a fairly a large payload, so they can pick up uh, one of the systems can pick up a couple pounds, two pounds. The other one can pick up uh, more like five or six pounds, and so you can get very high tonnage. And as a follow-up question, um, have you run some, you mentioned cost reduction. Have you run some numbers on a, uh, a city or a town um, comparison? So we haven't in terms of, uh, at that scale, uh, but we, um, we have run the numbers in terms of what it, the savings to a facility is per robot. And so in particular, we want it, we're shooting for a payback time of less than one year and a five-year ROI. Uh, well over 100%. What's the comparison between the uh, the effectiveness of the robots versus the uh, their human counterparts? So uh, the robot systems will be a little bit faster, uh, or a lot faster, depending on the model, and um, their accuracy uh, will will actually be much better. And so uh, part of our hope is that Can you uh, quantify much better for us. 
So uh, it depends who you talk to, but basically a person picks anywhere between 30 to 60 picks per minute. 60 is sort of the highest speed, uh, which is uh, about comparable with one of our robots, but most of the time they actually get pretty tired. And what's their error rate? Um, I've heard a variety of figures. Um, basically about around 95% is probably pretty good, uh, and that's where our system is, and it's getting better. Versus, I'm sorry, on the human side, it is what for an error rate? 90 to 95%. 90 to 95, so you guys can come in at parity. Essentially, yep. yes, and I, I would say we're sort of just getting started in terms of these machine learning uh, techniques. What are some things that are excluded that it wouldn't be able to pick up? So uh, we've been sort of picking our battles as carefully as we can. So we started with the easy stuff, which are all the things I listed. So bottles or plastics and cardboard and things like that. We're actually not sure what the limits are yet. We're starting to play around with thin films, for example. Uh, and other materials that are sort of difficult to recycle. The industry has issues with uh, black plastics, things like that, and so we, have, we hope to go after some of those difficult to sort categories. Uh, we even hope we can actually pick up electronics and things like that. Or we're pretty sure we can. We haven't done it yet, though. Um, I'll also take my five seconds to say um, uh, we actually have a paid pilot that we're hoping to announce soon, and I meant to say that during the presentation, so making progress. Thank you.